Okay, I think we can begin. So good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. It was a while since the last time we were streaming. Uh, and during that time, quite a lot of things kind of changed, but we are back. I have no idea how far we're going to go today. And I'm pretty sure you noticed what's the topic of today's stream. This is a build stream and we will be building or actually kind of rebuilding this thing, which is a uh, 47 centimeters, like from here to here, a flying queen. This is something I actually put together, I think, in 2020. And I even have a, had a video on the channel when I made them this thing. It's, it's cute. Look how cute this thing is. Uh, 18 inches, roughly 18 inches, and uh, even has the FPV. Not that it's very good with the FPV, uh, because the tiny whoop style camera in the front is absolute crap over here, but uh, well, it's uh, better than nothing. So, what's the plan today? Today, uh, I just need some motivation to do some building uh, of this thing. So, I will be building uh, and rebuilding, and you will be observing and we will share a thought or two. On top of that, I will be drinking some wine. So, prost. Ah, straight from Hungary. Kadarka 2021. Lovely. So, uh, that's cool. And also, we're gonna... I'm, no, I'm gonna. We're gonna extend the knowledge of the Slav people. Uh, because, like, probably some of you know, I'm from Europe, Central Europe, Poland, and we are Slavic people. And today... Today I will show you one of the famous Polish cuisines. This, you know what this is? I'm pretty sure that if you're from Eastern Europe, you know what this is. This is so-called zimne nuszki. It's amazing. My wife made it yesterday and they are bloody fantastic. So because this will be my dinner, then, then you know how it is. Um, okay. Uh, I think we can... S uh, <laughs> Peter also knows uh, what this is. Uh, because time flies, uh, we have today only approximately one hour, because I decided um, there is no point to compete with Bardwell uh, on his live stream. So today it will be relatively simple and relatively fast, and we will start uh, playing with this thing. So this is the Flying Queen. This is the Flying Queen. And as you can notice, oh, zimne nuszki, amazing stuff. And some vinegar, white wine vinegar, because it tastes better with the vinegar. So I want to update this build, uh, because this build is kind of extremely old. Uh, I actually... I started using this thing and build this thing when I was still using FreeSky links. Now I even don't have the FreeSky uh, transmitters anywhere. So we will have to update the receiver. I have the radio master. Uh, do it, no, not really do it yourself, but I have a radio master uh, Express LRS uh, receiver with the PWM outputs. Uh, because there is no flight controller in this thing. I decided that uh, good old uh, analog <laughs> analog flight will be fully enough. Oh, the magnets. Uh, this is the interesting build because the canopy is held by the magnets, but I think that the magnet itself kind of disintegrated and glue itself Polish coffee. There is no Polish coffee. Uh, such a concept as Polish coffee does not exist, man. Uh, I don't know how this thing is called uh, in your country and what exactly you are referring to, but there is no Polish coffee. Uh, first of all, coffee doesn't uh, grow anywhere in Poland. Um, knowing the reputation of my country, I would suspect that you mean some kind of the alcoholic... Something with alcohol, am I right? <laughs> um, but over here in Poland, it's never really called the Polish coffee, because why should it be? Uh, but zimne nuszki. Let's uh, uh, Willy FPV. Uh, uh, the f the thing is that there is a fat uh, on top of this thing. I actually throw it out every single time because well, I'm on the diet. Uh, we should all be on the diet, so the fat from the from the top goes goes away. Like we don't we don't do that uh, anything over here. Um, this was was kind of like that much that much of the fat <laughs> was on top. But now we have a diet diet meat jello. 
this is this is really like super amazing stuff if i was drinking vodka i should probably drink vodka right now but because i'm not drinking vodka then prost and i see that people with the name written in cyrillic are what's the meat in there that's pork uh, this is actually pork mm. The 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 recipe is relatively quite simple. You take you buy the pig legs and boil them for a few hours, and then there is a lot of the gelatin in this thing so that uh, when it um, cools down, it just turns into the the jello. It's a meat jello. My my kids say, ah, I don't want to eat this because it's, it's a jello with the taste of the meat. Still quite a good of the thing. Do you like broth, rosu? the chicken soup or the pork soup the broth this is this is a very <laughs> think of this thing as the very 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 dense broth because right why not okay but i think we should start doing something with this build because i cannot eat on the stream and dr eat and drink alcohol during the stream because this is not the pato stream although who knows what might happen next it's time to start uh, the pinning this uh, this receiver. Originally, this unfortunately came with the. Okay, this unfortunately came with the pins uh, soldered in. I'm not. Al I almost never use uh, pins for anything, and to make things more in interesting, there is just not enough space inside to. Ah, to have pins so we will absolutely have to depin it and that means uh, the part I absolutely hate doing because if you ask me the pinning is most probably the worst thing that uh, you might be doing to the electronics and this is also why I personally think that none of the manufacturers of the do-it-yourself stuff should be adding pins uh, to their builds because it makes just absolutely no bloody sense. If you have someone who would like to use pins, then he can solder this thing, but uh, I'm really not sure how about you, but I think that the majority of the pilots uh, are not really using pins for anything. So why to have it in the first place? It only takes so much time to depin it. And then for and unfortunately, this is something that we have to do today in the first place. By the way, do you know any good, better at least way to depin something that I'm doing right now? Just add some, a lot, actually quite a lot of the solder on the pins and just pull them out one by one. Okay. It's going somewhere. Good thing that this is relatively a cheap part, so even if it's broke. Oh man, Robert, minus 27, bloody cold. Wow, that's not that's not really something <laughs> that you, <laughs> you can survive. Better. I have a problem with the heat gun. I, I do own the heat gun, but personally I hate using heat gun because I have no really like uh, sense of, of of for how long I should add the heat from the heat gun. And every time I tried doing this with the heat gun, it ended up by just frying uh, the PCB. So I'm uh, usually extremely cautious when it comes to the heat gun. And basically only use the heat gun when I want to remove something huge that kind of is not really that delicate. Like, for example, I don't know the SMA connector, then the heat gun is absolutely fine. But if I have a choice, then no, no heat gun for me. Oh, I removed the pins too early. Because I forgot that I still have to flash the express LRS on it. Damn. Anyhow. 
and using the pins will be probably the simplest way to power this thing before soldering. So that's that. Okay, but... Ah. <laughs> Hello Dan from Czech. I was in Czech Republic uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, skiing in the Spindler of the uh, loved it, lovely experience. We had a beautiful weather, so it was uh, really a very nice, uh, very nice skiing trip. No bones broken, at least for me and my family, because it doesn't mean that nobody from our trip uh, broke any bones, because unfortunately some did. Uh, the friend of my my parents' friend broke a hip, so that was not really like the best skiing uh, trip for them so okay um i depinned the receiver um and because i depinned the receiver i think it's time we should uh, flash it with the latest express lrs i will be just using the bench power supply to power this thing from the five volts uh i did that much uh, I have prepared already the the firmware, uh, so we will not have to build anything with uh, to flash it. And I, this is the first time I'm using this receiver, so anything actually can happen. So let me quickly download the to the local download save. Fantastic. And let's try to connect to the receiver to be able to flash it. I have to use my phone mainly because I do not have the Wi-Fi in my in my PC. So that's nice. Uh, Rossman Group. What's the Rossman Group? Uh, Robert Rossler. Of course, I drank beer in the when I was in the. Czech Republic. I don't know why, but I'm basically drinking beer only when I'm Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I was... Oh, okay, now we have Express LRS connected. Uh, lovely. So, let's flash it. Uh, I broke my leg two years ago. Uh, look how the time flies. That was two years ago. On the 13th or the 14th, I don't really remember, of the February, but 2021. So, okay, why I cannot... Uh, why I cannot... Why I cannot select the file? What the... <sighs> Who will tell me why I cannot... Ah, now I can select the file. So I have to go to the files uh, and let's flash it. Blah, blah, blah. PWM output. So we're going to have channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. We're going to have... We will need three channels. So this is fine. And let's hit update. And let's see what's going to happen. Uh, the firmware is already set up to connect to my local Wi-Fi. So hopefully I uh, will not have to do any special things after that. And let me have some more of the Zimne Nuszki. Yes, no PFPV. Exactly. That was two years ago. Time flies extremely fast and it's really like super crazy that it's already two years i even had some kind of the small celebration <laughs> uh, of the two years anniversary on the other hand i'm super super lucky that i basically have no negative uh things with my with my leg it both the leg and the ankle because probably even the ankle was uh, more damaged than the than the leg itself and I like I can do everything I can run I can walk I can jump whatever uh, we're gonna tell and it's great if that was a broken hip well broken hips are not that easy 
because this this lady who broke the the hip, uh, she already has the artificial hip. That was like okay, no, well, pff, artificial one immediately. Mm, okay, so let me. Yes, loading model, and we want to set up. First, let me set up the. Let's set up the model name so we know what we have over here. Let's call it. Micro wink. Do you like to name your models in a uh, cool ways or not so much? I for a moment had a tendency to really like figure out the super fancy name for my builds, but then I decided nah, well, it's not really needed. No countdown and let's enable the internal express LRS. Yeah, we want to have the internal express LRS. Uh, okay, I think it stopped blinking, so that means it connected. Uh, let's quickly check if the receiver is working. Yeah, the receiver is working. Okay, so everything looks uh, looks good over here. So return. And let's even before I will put this thing into the uh, into the into the build. Let's configure the mixer. Let's configure the mixer so I will not have to worry about that uh, later during the build. Uh, it was a moment since the last time I <laughs> I set up the flying wing. Uh, in the without anything actually uh, so let's first of all delete everything so should I put the motor or channel on channel one or should I put the motor on channel three how do you think what's the better option uh, I think I will put the motor on channel one so so here we're gonna have the throttle and here we will have to build the, the mixer for 100%. I know that my mixer I will build for the for the ailerons for the control surfaces will be wrong, but we will fix that after after this thing is configured. They all end with the E sound. <laughs> oh, the kids, the kids are such a fantastic creatures. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I already don't remember when I was a kid. Man, I'm old. Uh, but I do have two of my kids. Uh, so that's really like super interesting how 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 everything changes, what you thought was normal uh, when you were younger and what is actually normal when normal when you are an adult and uh, your kids are doing something. Well, let's be honest, crazy. So, I think I configured one of the mixes for the... I don't think you can see anything because of the contrast. Uh, but basically, building the mixer for the fixed flying wing is you have to mix both aileron and elevator on one channel and do the same for the second output. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you have to always, depending on how your servers are configured and which way they are moving, you always will have to reverse some of them, uh, but you cannot. You don't really know how you should reverse them uh, after, before you connect everything and power everything. So we will not do it. By the way, I've been using the Radio Master Boxer for uh, for a moment now. Like I was using this thing twice because of the weather and and not only. And uh, I'm honestly not sure that this is the best place to put the arming switch. It's super complicated to arm this arm. Uh, all my stand standard model assignment channel puts this thing as the arming switch, but I think I will have to change it because it just doesn't make sense to have this switch as the arming switch. When when you are a tumbler, then yeah, okay, you just like have your finger over here. 
but because I'm I'm a pincher when I'm flying, I do not have the finger over here to be able to disarm uh, rapidly. So I think that SA is after all much uh, much better of the switch than the SF to arm disarm. So something that I discovered uh, well hard way after I hit a tree the drone went down and I was like where's the switch <laughs> to disarm this bloody contraption mm -mm -mm. so tasty by the way in the like 50s 60s Polish restaurant uh, slang this thing was called the jellyfish medusa and there was a popular semi dish which was called the binoculars and jellyfish which meant you got you get two shots of vodka and one zimne nuski <laughs> so called medusa i lorneta i medusa You say? To put a normal switch over here? Hmm. That actually might be an option. On the other hand, this is like... Hmm. I will have to rethink my channel assignment for this thing. But while we are here, uh, let's build the arming-disarming logic. Uh, I wonder if I will do something like that. Okay... Let's do the arming, disarming, and let's see if... Now, okay. Now, can you see anything? Yes. Now you can see anything. Um, let's build the arming, disarming logic. Because even though this is a fixed wing, I would like to have the logic on, the, on one of the switches. So when the switch is not flipped down, uh, it's not really... Uh, really doing anything so uh, in the standard way we're gonna have the 100% throttle channel map to the channel one and this is this is fantastic however for the second one we're gonna do the logic called the not multiplying at but multiplying replace and we're gonna have the SA in the top position and then we will send the value of minus 100, I think. So now if we go to the outputs, mm -hmm. something is not working. Always like that. SA not. So now we have, ah, because we are sending throttle. I don't want to send throttle, I want to send the max. I want to send max, and now when we have max, uh, I want to have, okay. So now we are not sending anything, only now we are sending anything, 100, okay. So uh, offset should actually be minus 200. And with the offset minus 200, we will just, if the SA is in the top position, and we don't want to trim it, when SA is in the top position, then we will always send the lowest possible value to this output and you know moving the throttle changes absolutely nothing but when i flip the switch then i have the throttle moving i wonder how much you can see over here probably not really that much uh, absolutely not that much okay never mind Okay, so let's move it to the slightly more normal position. Okay. Okay, now it should be everything, should be nicely visible. So that's that, and I think that we can stop playing with the radio receiver because, yeah, Boxer is like 
pretty nice radio. I, I do like the creatively small form factor. I even switched from my TX16S to the Boxer. So, well, I'm not really, I would not be switching to something that is worse than, uh, than the one before. But, but you know how it is. And uh, sometimes, well, you know even that you switched, but then you have some regrets. <laughs> I would prefer to have slightly more switches uh, because I miss like having one extra preposition switch. But besides that, the small form factor and the fact that I'm able to just combine two of the radios I've been using, because previously I was using TX16S and the Zorro into just one radio that does everything is actually kind of kind of nice option because I'm preparing right now to sell my Radio Master Zorro uh, because I was using this only with the small models and if I have the slightly like smaller boxer then let me just use boxer. The beautiful thing about the boxer is that the boxer is only slightly bigger and in some dimensions even actually slightly smaller than the Zorro, although the Zorro looks smaller because of this 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 empty space over here and uh, extended uh, screen and so on and so on with basically basically the same height <sighs> boxer without antenna is actually smaller and even in the topics of the height there is not really that much of the difference between those two radios so this radio will absolutely not a problem fit into my traveling bag and uh, I will not just have to use uh, one extra radio to, you know, to complicate everything. Uh, because I don't like when things are complicated. I like when things are super simple. Because then it's just better. So. I think you're right, Winston. I'm actually turning off the backlight might be a better option. But we are right now. No, I, the, the issue is with the contrast. The issue is just with the contrast because there is just so, so much of the contrast over here. Uh, I do not have enough of the lightning to to have a nice contrast last workbench, and with with enough of the light so that the backlight is kind of dimmed. Although I have that pretty big spot of big lamp over here, but because I do not have enough of the lights over here, I cannot turn them up all the way, so this one is extremely dimmed. Altop is a very powerful light. I forgot to turn on the logo. So, this is... Let's do the soldering. Um, as you can see, this is extremely legacy stuff. This thing just still has the uh, FreeSky X4R SB. No, I think this is the, or maybe this is SB. I don't really remember, but this thing still has the FreeSky X, uh, X4R receiver with the diversity antennas, but we don't need that thing. So we're going to just uh, get rid of this and remove the receiver and just use the single Express LRS because, look, and um, let's let's just quickly compare. This is the legacy size of the X4R classic, and here we have the <laughs> half half of the size modern Express LRS receiver that has so much more range than uh, than that one. So everything goes forward, and let's just get rid of this thing. By the way, this is extremely simple wing inside. It only has the motor, ESC is hidden over here, so but we will not be messing with the ESC at all. And the receiver and the bats, uh, power battery elimination circuit, you know, voltage stabilization. Because this thing is powered from the 2S LiPo, why 2S? Because I had no brushed brushless uh, ESC that could work with the 1S. So I just used the 2S uh, battery and stepped down the hmm, and stepped down the voltage with the battery elimination circuit. Motor gets powered from the 2S because because well why not? But the FPV setup and the receiver are 
powered oh no here here we are lovely are powered from from the beds and it's working quite fast quite fine the modern bags that's BECs the modern BECs especially the good quality step downs I'm, I'm almost exclusively using those little step downs from Matek have enough of the of the max current to really like allow you to connect anything anything you want and and to be able to power this thing absolutely not a problem then i'm gonna have a hangover tomorrow i know it <laughs> i'm usually not drinking wine but um, sometimes hmm i could drink some wine and then it's like one bottle <laughs> and it's out Okay, so we still have, but enough about me, enough about my wing. How's your life going? I saw that Canada is minus 27. <laughs> we have something like a stupid weather of, uh, it's almost spring. You can feel the spring in the air, but it's still relatively cold and it's really hard even to find uh, good weather. Like uh, Friday was uh -huh, okay, okay -ish. let's call it like that. Uh, yesterday, today, high wind, cold wind, uh, and uh, in general, the weather that makes you do not really want to leave your apartment at all, because it's just not, not nice at all. So the receiver, old receiver is removed. Probably we can get started with putting the new receiver in place. Where's the channel one? Where's the channel one? Okay, let's let's do it like this. Okay. Let's do it like this and I can even turn the slide down a little. Okay, so the channel one will be used to power our motor. This is the channel that goes into the throttle. So let's use the channel and that means that we should go like this. So let's put some tin on the, on the soldering pads and let's start soldering in. Because this is a flying wing, we will only need three channels, one for motor and two for servos. And because this receiver has the simple power distribution board built in, there should be absolutely no problem with getting everything done. So if I only, ah, bloody hell, the wires are too short. I can't, I can't do it like that. I probably have to do it like that because in other configuration the wires are too short and I won't be able to solder everything in place. Damn. Mm, not good. So then it will be like that. Okay. I hate when the wires are too short because I cut short wires and nice tight wires when I was building this thing for the first place. But now the reality kind of changed and the wires that back then were on the perfect length now are no longer with the perfect length. So, okay. Okay. Ground soldered in. Plus five volts soldered in, and let's install the wire that drives the ESC. Okay, that should be fine. Uh, Andrew, I'm sorry, I don't read Cyrillic.
Sorry, but I don't read Cyrillic. I was able to read Cyrillic like 30 years ago, in the 1992 probably, when I was learning Russian language in the primary school. But then, nah, nah. I, I, I remember how, how R is <laughs> written. And I remember that there is Miyaki Znak and the Tvarde Znak, but that's that's basically basically all. Yeah, having some spaghetti in the plane is always a fantastic idea. Because then you change some kind of the hardware and you do not have to rewire everything. That's I, I do the same for my builds. Drone builds. I always add this like one extra centimeter of the wire because one day it might just become extremely useful. By the way, uh, have I showed you my latest build? I, I have to show you my latest build. It's fantastic. I love it. We even had a stream when I was building this thing. This is the zoom out. This is the Purex 7 HD long range. I was only able to fly this thing twice, but I can tell you that it behaves fantastic in the air. Uh, this is the replacement for the Purex, excuse me, Purex 7 frame by design from like three, four years ago. Uh, it's more compact, smaller, more suited for the digital FPV. Uh, holds This one holds the O3 Air unit inside. Single GPS, single antenna. Uh, it's still configured to use the DJI Link, but I will get rid of that because I, I hate the DJI controller. Turns out that no, I, I'm not compatible with this thing, so I will not be using the DJI controller. It flies like just like that. Although I was only able to play with this thing twice, I already can feel that it will be a bloody the best craft in my fleet. And I have the perfect tune for it from the very beginning, because it's the same hardware as my Freestyle 7-incher, uh, and I just copied all the, all the tunes, and <laughs> it behaves amazing in the air. Amazing! But because of the crappy weather, I was not able to record any HD footage uh, from the flight yet. But I should. I think I should have somewhere the... Um, I should have somewhere the video from the DVR. Mm -hmm. So, no, no audio, and the weather was 100% crappy, no stabilization, by the way, I have the stabilization turned off in the air unit, and remember, this is a craft design for the long range, not for the flippity floppy. Uh, the VR does not really show it, but it's uh, pretty, pretty stable in the air, and you know, you see, it's doing given the position hold, <laughs> because it's enough inside, because why not? Uh, oh, it landed by itself. <laughs> I only put the landing pad uh, below it to, to, you know, so it does not really crash. Love this thing. I'm really kind of quite proud of uh, what I did with the proper camera on top. It will be truly amazing. But I don't like the radio. I don't like the DJI controller, unfortunately. But this is not why you are here, so let's continue with the building of this thingy. Yup, yup, yup. I don't have enough of the cameras. I should have more cameras. I only have two cameras right now. By the way, recently I, I became like videography addict. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you something. I'm improving my video rig. Right now I even have the rods with the rail. I even have a do-it-yourself matte box with the 
with the gate, with the flag. You can even put the cocking pair filters into it. I did it myself. Okay, I, I bought some parts, but I also 3D printed. Recently, 3D printer is almost uh, always running, printing something interesting. I'm more and more and more into the videography. I'm not good at it, but I'm more and more and more into the videography for sure. But okay, let's let's finish this build and let's solder all the wires and uh, let's put this thing into the air. Not the, the air, <laughs> it's dark. Let's power this thing because I really would like to... Oh, this wire is in the relatively bad shape. We will have to also insulate it because the wire is in the very bad shape. We will have to put some insulation on the wires. I'm, I know, I see, I know that you cannot see it, but those cheap uh, wires they put on the cheap servos. Ah, phone call. Sorry. Sorry, busy. But the insulation on the wires is almost destroyed. Yeah, I will have to immediately apply some insulation, liquid insulation on the stink. Uh, because, well... One, hmm. the joint looks kind of dry. I should get new glasses. And the last one, three, and hopefully that's all with the soldering uh, for today. What is What will be left will be hopefully only the configuration. So, okie dokie. Mm, but insulation, we have, to, uh, we have to insulate this one wire. I'm I to bet you cannot really see it but over here this wire over here the insulation over here is absolutely completely destroyed I think I squeezed this thing too much with the pliers when I was uh, working with it now previously no bloody idea and uh, it's just like naked wires everywhere so this thing will, this is a safety concerned, concern for sure. So let's put the PVB, MG Chemicals 422, awesome stuff. Kind of expensive, but then it's enough for a few years. So not really that much of the expensive. And uh, let's see if it will work now. Um, should I remove the propeller? Yeah, I think I should remove the propeller. It's a small prop, it will not, it will not hurt me, but then I don't want the motor to be damaged in case something goes wrong, so... So, so let's just remove the propeller from this thing. Okay, so propeller remove. Let me turn on the radio.
Yeah. Let's connect the let's connect power and let's set it to how much? Eight volts? Yeah. Let's put it to eight volts. And let's see if Hmm. Okay. I don't have the <laughs> the plug, uh, so I will just have to use the battery. And we will see if... Okay, nothing exploded yet. It's always a good sign. We have a green light. Yeah! It's alive, you see? It's alive. Ah, it was armed, so okay. Motor is not working. If I turn the motor on. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. It's absolutely alive. So the thing that still has to be done is that we have to uh, check the the mapping for the for the control surfaces because we do want to want have them moving in the correct uh, <laughs> correct direction. So let's go model and let's work on the mixer. Uh, channel two is the which one? This is the channel two. And okay, so on the channel two, I have to invert the. Hmm. Okay, like, like someone says, I will just turn off the backlight. Uh, where to disable the backlight in the. Off. Okay. Nice. Now, now you can see everything. Fantastic. Outstanding. So uh, the ailerons, the left aileron is reacting wrongly on pitch because it should go up when I'm moving this thing up. So uh, elevator should be switched to weight minus 15. If now I have over here weight minus 50 on the channel 2, then it's moving in the correct direction. Okay. And also have to reverse the roll because if I move it to the left, it also should go up. So, okay. So it should be minus 50, minus 50 on the left servo. Yup. Fantastic. And on the right servo, we should have elevator is correctly, but aileron is wrong, so have to reverse the aileron on the left servo. Fantastic. So let's try to run the uh, high five test again. If now everything works, both went up, both went down, right one up, left one up. Fantastic. You see? It's working. Now, the final thing that we can do is we can do the trust test. If the motor is rotating in the correct uh, direction, I know it's rotating in the correct direction because I was not messing with the ESC at all. But I want to hear the sound of this thing. We will not be playing with the FPV today, by the way. It's absolutely too early for that. So no, okay. Duty. Nice. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. It will be a joy to fly this thing. <laughs> because why not? 
And that basically concludes the today's live stream because I did everything I wanted to do. <laughs> no, but uh, but realistically. Um, and we are like even five minutes before Bardwell begins his stream. So we are we are going somewhere. Uh, Giz FPV, no, I will not put any lens on, on this thing because the goal is to... Ah, let me fix the light. The goal is to keep this thing light. I want this thing really, really, really light. Uh, previously, before uh, this this change, it it weighed at around sixty six grams. Let's take a scale, and let's see how much it's gonna weigh right now, with the battery, of course, and with the canopy. So right now we are at zero, we are at 44, 61, 62, 65 grams. And that's all. You do not really... <laughs> I could have three like that and still be in the 250 grams limit. That, um, so it's a huge success. Uh, that's, uh, that's good. Mm, we still okay if we are really strict we still have some things that uh, has to be done like i have to figure out where to put the antenna for the express lrs i don't really want to do anything super fancy with the antenna because why it doesn't make sense so probably probably a hot glue will be in order and I still have to install the receiver also somewhere in place. But besides, oh, but besides that, uh, it's a huge success. It's a huge success. And uh, if you don't have it yet, buy yourself 3M VHB tape. It's the best tape, like the best double sided tape, glues everything to everything, really like super irreplaceable in the RC hobby. I use it for drones, for airplanes, for, for different stuff. If there are two things that I want to semi permanently attach to themselves, so they are not going anywhere, VHB from 3M is just, just, just the thing to go. Okay. More FPV have I've been building any three inches? Yes. Um, have I destroyed the... No, I haven't. Of course I was. Let me show you something. First, something more traditional, Pirx Mini. We have uh, videos uh, about this thing already. Uh, you can find the materials um, about the Pirx Mini on the channel. Pretty pretty cool stuff. My own frame, by the way. At Pirx Mini Y4, which is the Y4 configuration with the two motors in line. Uh, I even had like two or three streams uh, of building uh, the Pirx Mini Y4. It's uh, almost ready. I have to replace the receiver with the Express LRS on this thing. And uh, I already have some flight footage recorded from this thing, uh, but I'm waiting for the weather slightly to have slightly better weather and to have slightly more material. And then, fantastic, outstanding. Three inches are pretty cool, if of course they fly right, because unfortunately sometimes they do not really fly right. It's hard to correctly tune the three inches. That's at least my uh, my opinion on the on the topic. Okay. Let's put the liquid tape on this thing so that we are sure that this is correctly in place. And I still have to figure out where to put the Express LRS antenna. I think I will just Put it like that, 
I don't I I I won't not be flying this thing far. So the place is absolutely fine. Okay. So I think I will just keep the the express address antenna like here over there. It's not that like I said this thing will be flying anywhere far. So basically any orientation uh, is fine. And let me just attach this thing semi-permanently in place. Like I said, it will be fine. Hmm. I think I should get the new liquid tape because Something is beeping. What is beeping? I have no idea what's beeping. Is it one of my cameras? No. So, what's beeping? Hmm. Anyhow. Anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. And then, when I... Put this thing over here. We have the fantastic, outstanding 66 gram or oh, 65. <laughs> it lost <laughs> one gram in the last uh, three years. Uh, wink, almost ready. Now I have to find the good spot, not a good, good time spot to be able to. Uh, to record some videos about uh, about this model one more time because it's really like super nice. I have a second one of this uh, the same thing. I want to convert the second one into the glider. Yeah, I know gliders and flying wings are not really the thing, but I want to repeat my experiment from a few years ago when I attached the uh, catapult on top of the drone, fly with this thing like high and then uh, hit the release button and something flies somewhere. So that's the, but that's something like I said that uh, I still have to have to work on. Uh, I have a I have a catapult by the way. Yeah, I have a catapult, but I have no idea where it is. Uh, it's the. Bungee, bungee launched uh, catapult for gliders or anything like that. Uh, pretty interesting, uh, interesting stuff. Okay, guys, uh, our hour passed. Uh, this was a it, it was a pleasure to to have you over here. Uh, half of the bottle of wine is over, and I ate my zimne uh, nuszki. So hopefully now you know more about the Eastern European culture and what zimne nuszki, which uh, directly translate to English at cord legs, <laughs> are and how amazing they are. If you ever be to be to in the central, central, central Europe, Eastern Europe, somewhere where the Slavs are, look for this thing. It's a meat jelly. <laughs> amazing stuff with the alcohol, like goes down your throat like a, like a treat okay so thank you very much um, the next live stream will be i have no bloody idea yet when there is a pretty good chance we're gonna have a ne next uh, build stream because uh, there's something i want to build so so why not invite you to the to the process and uh, thank you very much for joining me thank you very much for uh, for watching how i build and rebuild uh, stuff and for sharing a few jokes so until the next one, happy flying. Ciao.